Cool. Yes, I think I think we are live now. <laughs> Hi everybody. <laughs> hey everybody. Oh my god, I think we made it. Uh it was a, a pre-confusion from me as always. <laughs> the ones that follow the Elvati Sphere talks, they they know this feeling. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you so, so much for joining. I think you guys can see and hear us. And hey, welcome to a new Elveti Sphere talk here with Mark Janssen from Epica, Mayan and United Metal Minds. Thank you so much, Mark, for joining us. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Oh, this is so cool. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are streaming live to Sicily, right? <laughs> yes, all the way from Sicily. So I, I told you before and, and not yet to the listeners. It can mm -hmm. sometimes happen that we have a little hiccup because uh, here mm -hmm. the internet is not mm -hmm. not always one hundred percent. But uh, mm -hmm. usually it's usually it's fine. So if there's a little hiccup, uh, I'm yes. used to it. Hopefully it bothers no one else. And uh, <laughs> wow, wow! So you actually you live a little bit in the middle of nowhere. Literally in the middle of nowhere. Uh -huh. Even uh -huh. there's a little village close by, uh, mm -hmm. Serra di Palco. So I live officially in Serra di Palco, but I live then even outside that little village. So in the fields, literally in the fields. In the fields. Do, do, you, do you enjoy that? Like the, the silence, the darkness during the night, I guess, and everything, and the noises from the animals, and I don't know, how is it? Yes, I love it. I love mm -hmm. it. Uh, really, mm -hmm. it's... Uh, uh, before we did build our house here, there was, there was nothing. So we had to, to start from scratch. So mm -hmm. even the whole system for the, for the, the toilet system, for example, yeah, there was nothing, no electricity. <laughs> So it, it, in the beginning, we had to go through some processes, but now that everything is fixed, it's, uh, uh -huh, yeah, it's, uh -huh. it's a dream come true. It's like the, the place yeah. I was always dreaming of as when I was a kid, and now Whoa. I'm living there myself. <laughs> hey, amazing. And you, you could choose everything from the house, how you want it, and or yes. how is that? Yeah, okay. Yeah, we designed it together with uh, the guy who designed it for us, how you call such a guy. Yeah. An architect. Uh, our architect, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but he did everything together with us. And uh, mm -hmm. in the beginning mm -hmm. came up with a very modern house and we didn't like that. So we did tweak mm -hmm. it a lot. And in the end, we have something that we were really happy about. Yeah. Wow. Hey, awesome. And how is it now? Is there like, how is autumn in Sicily? Uh, today, for example, I walked around in t-shirt and shorts, mm -hmm. but... But mm -hmm. yeah, the, I even did that like one week ago when it was pretty cold. And, and some yeah. people were asking me, hey, are, are you not feeling cold? <laughs> I say, yeah, for Dutch people, this is still, uh, <laughs> it's still summer. <laughs> True, right? I mean, how, how cold does it get in Sicily in winter, for example? <laughs> uh, it, it winter can actually get down to uh, zero degrees. Depends uh -huh. also where you are. When yeah. you are on the, on the top of the Etna, it can, can be mm -hmm. minus 20 even. So, ah, <laughs> oh, really? Uh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. I see. Yeah, because I it's see. Uh, three and a half kilometers high, the Etna. And, uh, oh, yeah, well, then. Yeah, mm -hmm. when you're standing on the top uh, yeah, in the middle yeah. of the winter, uh, you're, you're going to be frozen. <laughs> frozen? Uh, but you can ski there, right? Or can yeah, you actually? Yeah, you, you can. You can. Yeah. You can in Sicily? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh, I didn't expect that. Wow. Yeah. Did yeah, you there's, there's, there's always snow in the winter yeah. on the Etna. And, uh, Okay. Uh, when you go to the Etna North, you, you can go like to 2,000 meters above sea level. And from there on, there's ski lifts uh, and they, they bring you up, up the mountain. And, uh, cool. And if you're lucky, then, then there's no eruption. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> that would be interesting. Yeah. Then you would ski down pretty fast, I guess. <laughs> I think then uh, with some fire up the ass, then people go even faster. I think so, yeah. <laughs> hey, seriously. Do you ski or do you snowboard or nothing or? No, I, I always wanted to do that, but uh, there's mm -hmm. so many great things to do in life that I never found the time actually to to learn. But uh, for me, yeah, it's one of the things that I really would like to try mm -hmm. one day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I've been a couple of times on, on the on the top of the Etna, but mm -hmm. uh, never never for skiing yet. Um, and you can just hike up there, or how is it? Yes, uh, yeah. and fr from the, the south side, you actually need to have permission to go there at a, after mm -hmm. a certain uh, point because then it can, can get dangerous. And uh, from the north side, I, I didn't see any signals. We, we went pretty much all, all the way up. And uh, I remember one time I was with my brother. We went, uh, we went also all the way up. And mm -hmm. then at a certain point, it became really foggy. We couldn't see anything. So we, we used okay. our navigation to 
to go all the way to the main crater. And then we were standing all, all the way on the top. And then uh -huh. all of a sudden we heard like, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> and and then, then you feel, <laughs> then you feel so small. <laughs> and, oh, shit. <laughs> We and made then, it safe back. Okay. But two weeks later, two weeks later, there was an eruption. So it was already pro pretty much, I think, like pre cooking pre up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So it happened still, uh, but it not in a dangerous way. Or do people need to get evacuated around? Or yes, yes, it it, it is an active volcano. So it, mm -hmm. it is. Uh, yeah, it can happen any moment. And uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Some years ago, also somebody died there. I I, I think. Some, oh, yeah. Somebody okay. was doing some uh, some some scientists was uh, investigating their uh, oh. mm -hmm. the, the, the yeah uh, mm -hmm. eruption mm -hmm. and um, but usually uh, if you are wearing a helmet and uh, and mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. there's also some some tours going up uh, the, the chance is very small that something happens but there's always a, a little risk of course yeah okay I see but uh, you say helmet because of the the fire thingies or because you actually need to climb or how do I need to imagine yeah I it? think I think they they <laughs> made that obligatory uh, to wear helmets mm -hmm. because if there is uh, all of a sudden an, an eruption and yeah mm -hmm. then all these rocks they they get fitted out <laughs> so yeah. in, in that in that for that reason you have to wear a helmet there yeah wow. and also okay. these rocks some some parts are really steep and if somebody's walking there and, and one rock rolls down it can also end up on your on your head oh yeah sure it's it's dark right it's like black there is it yeah is it right? from, from yeah. like uh 1500 meters on it's really this, this volcanic rock mm -hmm. it's, it's brownish blackish yes Wow, I'm super fascinated. Me as a Swiss person, you know, mountains. So we don't have volcanoes. So this sounds very interesting, <laughs> actually. Yeah, in Sicily, you can find literally everything. I've, I've, mm -hmm. I've traveled all around the world. And uh, there's so many beautiful places all around the world. But in Sicily, you can find from mm -hmm. every part of the world something somewhere. It's really interesting. So yes. you have like sea, mountains, mm -hmm. but also small hills, uh, big mountains. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, snow mm -hmm. you have forest and uh, when mm -hmm. you go uh, yeah above like 1000 meters you have different kind of trees so you can find cool. really everything everything wow and so you can also be super active i mean you you cycle a lot right yes mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. i love to mm -hmm. cycle and uh, yeah. also in sicily you when you are cyclist you it's really uh, also uh, heaven on earth the only disadvantages mm -hmm. uh, i must say that these italians they drive like crazy <laughs> you mean that the cycler or the the, no, the car these guys drivers? in the car, the car. <laughs> because they <laughs> they think like they think like uh, my car is bigger than your bike so you better <laughs> oh <go away. laughs> this is how they think oh okay <laughs> oh yeah 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 that's dangerous for in you the beginning <laughs> i really had to get used to it because in, in the netherlands when you have priority you get it the here you have to, to think the other yeah. way around if you have priority <laughs> The, the car takes a priority because yeah the, the driver thinks like <laughs> i'm uh, stronger i'm so, stronger than you so yeah. you watch out <laughs> <laughs> but now i'm used to it and uh, now yeah. i i found my way yeah okay <laughs> so your way is just to be super careful and watch out and yes uh, when, when you cycle you all the time have to think like they think and that's yeah. like uh, they can do whatever they feel like at that point <laughs> Oh my goodness, I see. But do you do you go alone or do you go in groups? Maybe it's I safer in groups. I go alone. Yeah, mm -hmm. but actually, I, I think it's safer alone because when you go oh, in yeah. a group, you, you usually cycle like two next to each other. And oh. then, then there's, mm -hmm. there's even less space for cars. So uh -huh. I, I, prefer, I prefer to cycle alone. And actually, uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's true because as a car driver, sometimes, you know, either they drive next to each other and then if you want to overtake, you need to be careful. Yeah. Or they're, right? I mean, it's like, <laughs> because oh, some, <laughs> Because some, some cyclists, they cycle also like crazy. So I know from both, <laughs> from both sides, I know that how annoying they are. So some car, <laughs> car drivers are really annoying and some cyclists are also really annoying. And especially when they cycle in groups. <laughs> especially, actually, now when I think about it, or the worst is, the worst if it's they're like, let's say they're like five, 
but they they have like three meters difference between each other so if you want to overtake everybody you you need like 50 meters and no way yes, then, I, yes. then i then i wait then i'm like okay guys <laughs> <laughs> and, and in italy they don't wait they think like oh if you want to to cycle like that in a group it's your own risk <laughs> then, <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness but you never had any like accident style with the car so it was no the only fine. accident i had I, was my own fault i i mm -hmm. probably i cycled in a hole and mm -hmm. i i shoved like uh five meters over the ground i, I still think mm. that you can see some of oh this. yeah this, uh, oh <laughs> all right i don't know if you can see it uh, but, uh, okay some, okay some scars of the oh side i thing. see oh i see <laughs> all right all right but but you wear a helmet and then i mean then but yeah, it was just annoying for the, the, the next couple of nights to sleep because yeah. You, yeah, you, yeah. you have everywhere mm -hmm. wounds all over your body mm -hmm. and then you, you cannot turn and you cannot do anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. that's the risk of being a cyclist, cyclist. Oh, wow. When did you start that? I mean, you, you grew up in the Netherlands, right? So maybe you started yes. there. It's flat. It's nice. I, I saw <laughs> on, the, on the TV when I was uh, a kid, I saw the Tour de France uh, mm. with Laurent Fignon and... Uh, and that other guy, <laughs> what was his uh -huh, name again? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the, there was some some American. Um, uh huh. Uh, oh, yeah. Le Mans, Greg Le Mans. American Greg Le Mans. Oh, okay. Greg, Greg Le Mans. Greg, Greg Le Mans. Le Mans. <laughs> and, and, and he was he was fighting with uh, Laurent Fignon, and and I was so fascinated by mm -hmm. them, and. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Then th from there on, I got really, really uh, passionate about it. And when we went for holidays, my, my parents and I, um, mm -hmm. I, I, I did run the bike there. I was like 10 or 11 years old. And I climbed my first uh, mountain with a, with a mountain bike rental. <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Did you actually start with your passion for cycles before music? Yes. Okay, my oh, first, that's interesting. My first dream was actually to become a professional cyclist. Seriously? Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, oh, interesting. It, this, this didn't work out, it was worked out the other way. It's quite cool yeah, now, I, how it I, turned I, out. <laughs> I really wanted to, to do it, and at a certain point, I became a part of a, of a cycling team in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. And uh, But then I got some, some kind of rare form of the illness of Pfeiffer, that's a kind of uh, uh, virus infection. And mm -hmm. I was for one year, I was completely tired. I couldn't do uh, any oh. sports. And oh, that was no. the time that I picked up the guitar and started mm -hmm. playing guitar because at least I could play a music instrument while sitting. <laughs> oh, yeah. shit. For a whole year, you didn't have so much energy. No, yeah. I, 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 and the doctors didn't know what it was in the beginning. They, they thought it was some kind of uh, depression or something that many yeah. kids at that time, they, they are suffering from depression. Mm -hmm. But uh, I always thought, like, it is something that they ju just couldn't find. And after one year, they did some new blood tests. And then they yeah. finally found out it was a, a really rare uh, form of fiber disease. Okay. And uh, okay. at least then I was happy that they found out what it yeah, was. Because for sure. at, a, at a certain point, people start saying, like, hey, come on, uh, uh, mm -hmm. get over it. Uh, come mm -hmm. on, a bit of uh, come on. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get your shit together, you know, yes, something like yes. that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now it's been a while. Like, come on, uh, move on. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> ah, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. How, how old were you when you had this? Uh, the seventeen. Oh yeah, that's an intense year. I mean, you know. Yeah. Okay. And and, and mm -hmm. for sure, I, at a certain point, I started getting some kind of a depression because I couldn't do anything mm -hmm. and I was mm -hmm. feeling like shit and like no energy. And then you, you you get some kind of depression because of that. Yes, because of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the, the the underlying problem was that uh, that uh, uh -huh. virus infection. And but yeah, then as as soon as they found out, then yeah. also things started slowly getting better, and then everything was fine again. And when <laughs> once my energy was back, I finished yeah. my school uh, two yeah. years in one because I also missed uh, one year of school. Ah, oh, you missed one year of school. Yeah, you couldn't even yeah. go to school. Nothing. Oh. I was going in the beginning. I was going to school, but it was yeah. taking so much of of my energy. I I just couldn't uh, get. Uh, yeah, I couldn't oh. do it the way I wanted mm -hmm. to do. And oh my god! Yes, mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. pretty messed up year. <laughs> hey, I can imagine, especially when you don't know what's up. 
Like, and yes. then people start saying, yeah, get your shit together. And, la, 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 and you're like, hey, guys, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> yeah, no, yes. I get it. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. But then then music started or like a little bit earlier. But yeah. Yeah. But then uh, indeed, I started playing guitar. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, then my new dream was to uh, to get a band. <laughs> to be in a band. <laughs> and you did. <laughs> <laughs> and then I did. Yeah. <laughs> Quite some. <laughs> <laughs> Quite some bands, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay wow so actually this this year also had some positive effects maybe without this you would have not gotten that much into music maybe who knows who knows yeah but i think everything what happens in life that has some influence on, on yeah. how the person you become yeah because yeah. this year that what, I, what yeah how, however how shit it was it, it mm. made me the person who i am today it made yes. me much stronger so i had to go mm -hmm. through that through that mm -hmm. mess my 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 health had, had to be so down for, for me to find a way to make sure that would never happen again. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so I started living a very healthy lifestyle. And so mm -hmm. I, I, st I think always that whatever happens, it happens for a reason. Yes, 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 definitely. Okay, okay. And now th now you have healthy lifestyle. I know about your ice bathing, by the way. I yes. see it. I see it. You even have one in your house, also outside your house. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have made indeed uh, this, this kind of bath uh, with stones outside my uh -huh. house. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I worked on it for like uh, four or five months. Mm -hmm. And then when it was finished, I felt actually a bit sad that it was... It was so fun to, to work on it and every day and I had some, wow. it was during the, the, the lockdown. So I had, Perfect. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it was my, my passion during the lockdown. And when it was finished, I felt some kind of, oh, what, what, what can I do now? What can I do now? Well, now you can take ice baths. <laughs> yes, and that's what I'm doing now. <laughs> wow. wow. And so now how... that the temperature is going down again. For, yeah. I, because when I was uh, younger, I really used to hate the winter. It, uh, I don't, mm -hmm, didn't mm -hmm. like it at all, this coldness. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't even stand the coldness. I hated it. Mm -hmm, and now mm -hmm. I, I, I actually enjoy the cold. It's, wow. It okay, that's quite a change. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, how do we imagine, how do you bring the ice to the ice bath? <laughs> or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have this kind of freezer dedicated to making ice for the ice bath. Okay. And, uh, okay. So, so during the summer, I use this freezer, and during mm -hmm. the winter, there's not so much ice needed to to make it really cold. Mm -hmm. So then um, I, I need much less ice. But in the summer, I really have to because here in Sicily it gets so hot, and I, I need yeah. really a huge quantity of of ice to, yes. to bring the temperature down. Yeah. Yeah. And does it stay once it's cold also in summer or do you always have to refill with the ice if you're in there? I mean, you don't yeah, stay yeah. there too long, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my record now it's uh, 50 minutes. 50 minutes? <laughs> yeah. Okay. 50 and, uh, minutes in an ice bath. Okay, this, this yeah. is insane. And this okay. winter I want to wanna do make it to one hour. So that's my goal for this winter. I want to uh, realize the one hour ice bath. But how, how cold is the ice bath? Uh, depends. So uh, in the summer when it's really hot, like 40 degrees outside, I can bring it down only to like 12 degrees. And that's still, still is cold. But in the winter, I can make it really like four or three degrees. Then it can be really, really cool. And, and stupid question maybe, but what do you do when you're in there? Do you have a breathing <laughs> exercise or? <laughs> yeah, the, you have it's to very imagine. Interesting. It's, mm -hmm. it's never fun to go in. So even after mm -hmm. four years that I'm used to it, it's, it's the, the first minute, it's always terrible. Every, mm -hmm. every time again. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but then, yeah, I get in and then you control yourself. You stay mm -hmm. calm. Uh, you control your breathing. And after one minute, uh, it, it's going okay. Then you start feeling cold. And, wow. and then actually yeah. I start feeling warm. Then it's, it's like... Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to describe uh, how that happens. Uh, but the last three times I did an ice bath, at, at, at a certain point, I felt like I was my back I, standing against uh, a heater. My, okay. my, my back feels like on fire, literally like on fire. <laughs> how comes? Like... I think now my body got used to it. And, and now when I get uh, exposed to such, such uh, coldness, my body mm -hmm. knows, hey, there it is, poof, mm -hmm. I put on the heater. 
the body does it automatically. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then after a while, you start feeling uh, cold again, but it takes longer and longer before mm -hmm. that happens. Mm -hmm, and when you mm -hmm. start feeling cold, you, you can mentally uh, prepare yourself and put like an inner fire. So you imagine a fire inside you, mm -hmm. and then you can keep on for a longer time. And at a certain point when you feel like, okay, mm -hmm. my body says now it's enough, then I go out. And you feel that, like, okay, now it's yeah. enough. I go out. Yeah, yeah. This is like I, I also learned to, to feel mm -hmm. that, yeah, because in the beginning, then you are sometimes a bit uh, over enthusiastic. And I stayed in, in the beginning a bit too long mm -hmm. uh, when I was not yet used to it. Uh, mm -hmm. and, then, and then I was like for 45 minutes. <laughs> oh, afterwards, the body had yeah. a hard time to heat yes. up again. Uh huh. Yes. <laughs> uh huh. Okay, and you said you learned it. So did you do a course? Is it is it this Wim Hof? Uh, yes, I method? learned a lot. I learned a lot from this uh, Wim Hof uh, guy. Mm -hmm. He's he's actually from the province that I'm from as well in the Netherlands. So ah, he's yeah. uh, he's a Limburg uh, Limburgian. Ah, well there so, you go. Yeah, it's destiny. Like ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. He, he, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he uh, he came up with all these techniques, and uh, he has been very very important to open this up for for a big uh, audience mm -hmm. uh, without mm -hmm. him uh, there's there's some other people doing it too but he was yeah. really the the first one and he really brought it to the next level and uh, mm -hmm. he's doing not only ice baths but also really cool breathing, breathing mm -hmm. exercises yeah mm -hmm. and i'm mm -hmm. doing them too and of course after a while you find a bit also your own way so you you do it uh, you find your own yeah. way what what feels good to you mm -hmm. but uh, based on on his techniques yes Okay, okay. Wim, Wim Hof for everybody. It's, Wim Hof. it's, a, it's yes. a crazy guy. He's a like a profi uh, sportsman, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a little hiccup now. So yeah, yes, we yes. Lot, okay, you're yeah. back. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, just for everybody. So Wim Hof, um, he's a, a, a Dutch uh, profi sportsman, right? And, yeah, mm -hmm. he did also crazy things like uh, running a marathon in the mm -hmm. Sahara without drinking, mm -hmm. and also uh, climbing the, 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 the in the Himalaya uh, mm -hmm. with, with, with just with his shorts, or he did like a half marathon in the Antarctica. So <laughs> he, he did he did so many crazy. He also did like swimming under the ice, and then his, uh, he forgot to put like some some goggles, so his his eyes froze and he couldn't see anything uh, anymore. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No. No, he almost died. <laughs> he almost died there. So yeah, because he he had to swim to a hole, but he, his eyes froze, and then he had to go by intuition because he, he swam too far. Then he had to go back uh, like five uh, seconds to, and then yeah, intuitively he found the, the way to the hole, and also by calculating well, otherwise he would have been dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, was there anybody that could have, you know, gotten him out or so? No. Yeah, once you're under the ice, you can, you and you are too far off, you you can forget about it. Then, yeah, you you you're out of breath and then you die pretty fast. Oh my goodness! And the ice froze. Oh my no! Yeah. This, this is this is. <laughs> but he still is seeing. It. They they're fine, right? Yeah, yeah, no, he's completely mm -hmm. fine. Like you said, yeah. uh, we are all a little bit crazy, so yeah. Uh, when you do this, you need to be a little bit uh, crazy. <laughs> yeah, I I also heard he does these retreats or some like a week or two where you can go to his house, I think, and yeah, he does yeah. courses. Did you yeah. do something like that? Or? I never did it, but uh, yeah. it sounds really interesting to me, uh, mm -hmm. especially for the for the fun and and also to learn maybe some new things that I don't know yet. Uh, even though I'm, uh, I I read his books and uh, I, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I pretty much found my way already. But there's always new things to learn. Mm -hmm. And always when you see other people doing things in a different way, there's always things you can you can pick up. And hey, yeah, that's that's interesting. Yeah. That's, let's try it that way. Oh, yes. that's, that's really cool. So, okay. And how, how are his breathing exercises? Do you enjoy them? Do they give you energy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's also something really, really cool because then you like uh, 30 times you breathe in, breathe out. And mm -hmm. then uh, after 30 times uh, you breathe out again and, and you uh, don't breathe anymore. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. you feel, it makes you feel good, first of all. But also uh, apparently they, they still have to study that more. 
that but also it gives you a good uh, also boost for the immune system mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. if you're mm -hmm. if you're like uh, if a virus attacks you for example a flu uh, with this technique so not only the ice bath but also the breathing technique uh, you can eat more easily fight off the, the flu and uh, mm -hmm. I know that personally because in the past uh, I had like two three times a year the flu it was really annoying and oh, was yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah also especially when you're on tour you know all about that how annoying <laughs> it is to have the yeah. flu on tour <laughs> <laughs> the worst <laughs> yeah it's so terrible and uh, mm -hmm. but but now since uh, four and a half years that I started doing this uh, first the cold showers and then the ice baths I never had the flu again so it's really remarkable Often so from a guy who has mm -hmm. yeah so often the flu and then now never again you still feel like that that period before you get the flu like hey there's something mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. and then the flu hits you so that period before i still have that like hey i don't feel good what is this yeah and then after one day i feel good again it's really strange so it's like the yeah the body found a way to poof, attack that in the early hey. stage this is super super interesting actually so like do you do it every day like this breathing and then the, the ice bath regularly as well or how is that yeah I do every day uh, either a cold shower or a cold bath uh, and then like once a week or once in two weeks i do the the ice bath with staying in as long as i can oh, wow okay because, uh, <laughs> because still uh, yeah when you have to prepare the ice it takes one week before the ice is frozen and uh, especially in summer, it takes a bit longer. Now that's getting towards winter, it goes a bit faster because the, the room where the, the freezer is, it's, it's also a bit more cooled down now. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, like this, I, I have fun. And yeah, yeah and like I said, it's always the first minute is, is always terrible. And it always remains terrible. <laughs> wow. I can only imagine the feeling when you walk in. I mean, the legs are maybe okay i mean it's already horrible but then as soon as it goes up and up and up i mean oh. actually actually the what the people they have most problems with the feet and the hands oh the feet are oh, really yes oh, the feet yeah. and the hands because the I, I do also every time my friends come over they kind of have to do the ice bath <laughs> 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 and I notice that all the time the feet uh, is the and the hands are uh, problematic. Oh yeah, okay. Yes. Oh, interesting, interesting. Yeah, and, and I when, just uh -huh. yeah, yeah, when they have really a problem with it, I always then have some some water shoes that I give them, and then with the water uh, shoes, uh, oh. it's it's easier. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay. But at least you can do it with friends. I just wanted to ask, do you do it always alone or do you have actually buddies that do that as well? I mean, <laughs> it's not like you find around the corner, everybody that does this, you know? <laughs> no, there's not many people that like to try that, but actually most people, they are really interested in it. They, they find it fascinating, yeah. the, the, the technique. So they want mm -hmm. to try and, and always when my friends come over, because when friends come to Sicily, they, they don't mm -hmm. never stay for one day, but they, they stay like for one week. And then, yeah. then there's always some time to do an ice bath. But the funny thing is then when I ask, uh, they always enjoy it. But then I ask, shall we do it again? And, and they're then, like, uh, yeah, oh, no. well. <laughs> <laughs> now they got the experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That one time was really cool. But yeah, let's do <laughs> Oh, I see. I see. How, how long can your friends stay? I mean, like five minutes, two minutes? No, uh, yeah, also uh, recently it was Jack Drisse here. He's, uh, I, I was with him in After Forever and, and oh, uh, later on yeah. in Mayan. Mm -hmm. And he's, he stayed in for like half an hour already his first time. And I said, Chuck, uh, come on, it's <laughs> really you have to go out. It's, uh, it's not yeah. healthy to, to stay too long the too first long, time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. I, I really had to, to push him a bit out. Because <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> because okay. He, he started becoming a bit like a state of a of a Tibetan monk. He was at a certain point. I saw him like this, okay. and uh, yeah. I said, "Chuck, uh, hello." Now, now it's time. And now it's time. Yeah, get, get out. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, okay, yes. interesting. Aha! Uh -huh. So, were you guys working on some music or? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. He just he, he came over to have a good time because we always said to each other already one day he, he would want to visit me in, uh, in yeah. Sicily. And now finally was the time that it, uh, now was it the happened time. to be. Yes. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. Okay. Yes. Were your bandmates ever at your place? Like, I don't know. How's it? 
No, from Epica, nobody has yet. Nobody yet. Nobody no, yet. No, no mm-hmm. one yet. There was sometimes there were there were some plans, but then something uh-huh. happened, and yeah. because yeah, you really have to organize things well because uh, yeah, yeah, like you said, like I said, you cannot come for just one evening. Once people come, they stay for like one yeah. week, and yeah. then if something happens and uh, it doesn't happen anymore, then. Yeah, then, then yeah, you have yeah, to make it a new plan. So of course, of course, and maybe they're just afraid of the ice bath because <laughs> they know it's calling when they come. <laughs> yes, they know that they all have to do it, but I think they more they look more forward to the Sicilian uh, pizza. We have a pizza oven in the garden as well, and. Uh, oh. <laughs> okay okay serious business there i see yes. oh i love that oh wow so they're mm-hmm. always talking about the sicilian pizza and, and uh, barbecue they're never talking about the the, the, the ice the bath, looking no? forward to the ice <laughs> bath no <laughs> So, so. <laughs> wow, you have a pizza oven in the garden. Hey, yes. it sounds like a dream, everything there. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's all a lot of work. And, uh, and mm-hmm. uh, I do everything myself together yeah. with uh, uh, the father of, of my girlfriend. Uh, mm-hmm. He is mm-hmm. really handy, a very mm-hmm. handy guy. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. the pizza oven, I must say, most of the, the job he did. I just uh, helped with, uh, with some, some of the finishing touch. Ah, so the, you built it yourself or you didn't just order it and no no we we built basically in the garden everything ourselves okay uh, wow yeah. it's a bit more work but uh, you can make it exactly the way you want it. the way you want it and, yeah. and it's fun building so uh-huh. uh, with yeah. the extra free time now that uh, because yeah touring got a bit less due to obvious reasons yeah but mm-hmm. all the extra free time is spent well now Spent on building around and the house, right? Uh, yeah. Yes, uh-huh, yes. Uh-huh. Wow. Okay, so you were actually super busy during this whole Corona time and so on. Yes, yes. <laughs> I haven't okay. been. Uh, there was only a few days that I was a little bit bored. That was when it was in the summer. It was at a certain point, forty-five degrees, and oh. it was even for me. Oh. It was too hot. It was too hot to do something, and and we don't have air conditioning in the house yet. Uh, because, oh. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, we we are we are waiting for the sun panels, and then when they arrive, and we also have air conditioning. But uh, uh, that, that forty-five degrees, I I I, I no. couldn't get anything done, and not in the garden, but also not inside. No. It was no too hot. <laughs> no. Well, did you take a, an an ice bath? <laughs> I did take an ice bath. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> At least that. Oh At wow. Least that. Wow, 45 degrees. Okay, we don't have that in Switzerland. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, you're, you're, you can be lucky that the 45 degrees, uh, it's, it's also yeah. for me, it's too much. It's yeah, too I much, don't like, yes. I don't like it. No. Yes, no. no, 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 no. Okay, okay, I see. Okay, yeah. and, and then cycling you do in the morning, in the evening then. I mean, if it's that warm, then you can't. Yeah, you can't these days, it's 45 degrees already in the morning. The, the sun it's gets up too. and it's, yeah. it's already 30 degrees. Yeah. It's... Yeah. Uh, and then it, it, within no time, it's it's uh, mm-hmm. 38 and then, oof. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Too warm, too warm. Yeah. yeah. Okay, wow. Hey, and I saw you also have grapes in your garden, right? Yes, or that's right. Yeah, I saw that on Instagram. This is, I mean, not just a few. I mean, I saw a whole <laughs> truck full with grapes. Yes, but I was really lucky with that because <laughs> I, I, I had a neighbor and she, she was already pretty old, but she was going to move mm-hmm. to Germany to her family. Mm-hmm. And they were selling the the land, uh, so they and nobody wanted to buy the house. And at a certain point, I said, "Yeah, I can buy the part of the land." And mm-hmm. uh, and they said, uh, "Yeah, mm-hmm. first we see if we can sell the house with all the land." And I said, "That's fine," but they couldn't sell the house. So at a certain point, they said, "Okay, we sell the land to you." So I could get it for a really fair uh, price. Yeah. And then suddenly, I had a whole uh, wine garden. <laughs> <laughs> suddenly Zach, I don't yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah because really really it's, it's really cheap here the land mm-hmm. it, 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 mm-hmm. with all the land I have here in the Netherlands mm-hmm. I, I would have have such a little part of land mm-hmm. 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 and now you have yes. a whole winery almost yes yes <laughs> or or at least a wine field do you also make your own wine or wine yeah that's also juice? what uh, yeah mm-hmm. the father of my girlfriend he's making his own wine and uh, I, I help him cutting the grapes I I look how he did it, so in the future yeah. I can do it also myself. But uh, but he's the the guy of the wine. 
Yeah. Wow. Okay. And is it just for family or do you also export it or? Yes, basically just for family. But we did yeah. a, a certain point. We, we made some uh, Mayan wine and uh, no oh this yes, is awesome yes, <laughs> yes okay okay but it's very expensive to export it and uh, then you, uh, alcohol yes yeah and then you also you have to make these these uh, bottles so expensive that uh, that is basically not uh, mm. uh yeah not worth it because then you have to sell a bottle for 35 euros it, mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. it's also yeah pretty expensive for people so We did it a few times, but uh, yeah. in the future, maybe if we can do a bigger quantity and then mm -hmm. uh, export the, the whole thing in, at once, then, mm -hmm. and then maybe you can sell the bottles for, for a very nice price. But it's mm -hmm. a lot of work, so it depends on, uh, on yeah. uh, <laughs> also the time. Wow. And uh, is it like done in this traditional way with the feet still, or you have machines? <laughs> or, I don't know. I'm so no, it's not, not with the feet. <laughs> no, but but uh, that guy, uh, the father of my girlfriend, he's he's really handy. He's called Giuseppe, like oh. almost everybody in in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> but he's so handy. He made a machine that he, mm -hmm. the grapes get in, and he, he uh, yeah start turning the wheel. Okay, okay, and then, yep. and then everything gets through. <laughs> but he has machines for everything. He built his own heating system in his house. He. Oy. In the past, he even had a windmill for electricity. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's really. Okay. Yeah. He built wow. all kinds of machines himself. Yeah. Okay. Wow. This, this is crazy. All right. It is. It is. It's, it's nice to have somebody that is that handy in the family, actually. It's yes. always good. <laughs> yeah. Because also without him, we could have not done many of the things that we have in our house because. Mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, mm -hmm. he's, he knows about everything uh, mm -hmm. enough to, to make it work. And if wow. he doesn't know enough, he asks a friend, hey, how, how I have to do that? And, mm -hmm. and then he knows it. Wow. And then he knows yeah. it. <laughs> then he knows it, yeah. Okay, wow. And how do you speak with him? Uh, Italian, S Sicilian or, or English? Uh, with him in Italian. And in, in Italian, I speak with Italian, him. Italian, Italian, yes. Okay, yes. I see. Yes. Okay. Um, Is, is, it a, is there a difference from Italian and the Sicilian uh, dialect? Yes, there's a big difference. Uh, yeah. So for me, it's also harder to learn Italian because here people have and already kind of a, an accent uh, mm -hmm. and, and they have also next to that their own Sicilian dialect. It's mm -hmm. kind of a language on its own. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they, they mix also these, these things. So uh, for me, it's very hard to learn Italian because... I never know if they're speaking Sicilian or they're speaking Italian. But now I found my way and uh, I, I went through that first hard part. And now I can already uh, speak with people. That's uh, luckily. Uh, that's, uh, yeah. yeah. Are, are you now getting into fluent Italian speaking? Like... Uh, not, fl not fluent yet. Mm -hmm. uh, not yet. But, uh, okay. But mm -hmm. I, can, I can talk about things, uh, not mm -hmm. about the... the Uh, complicated stuff like politics and, and things like that. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, but conversation. But easy, easy things, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, this is actually really cool. Yeah, okay. That's yeah, okay, a beautiful language. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just, I, I really suck at languages. So uh, it's a miracle that I, I speak so many languages now because uh, I, I'm not a mathematic guy. So uh, ah. at school, they always say mm -hmm. like, oh, you're, you're the language person or the yeah. mathematic person. And I'm yes. definitely the mathematic person. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. But still with a talent for languages. I mean, you speak not, Italian. No talent at all. <laughs> ah, so come on. English, Italian, Dutch. Do you speak some German? I, I can also speak German. Yeah. Yeah, also. Yeah, hello. That's is kind of cool. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, Natürlich. yeah, that's cool. Natürlich. <laughs> <laughs> Hast du es in der Schule gelernt? Did you learn it at school? <laughs> ah, ja. ich habe das von meiner Opa gelernt. Ah, oh. ah, oh. do you have some German um, origins? My, yeah, my, my, my grandfather is German. So, ah, <laughs> and okay. when, always when I was at his place, he was watching the, the, the German TV. So I picked it up uh, when I was a kid. So then it's, it's easy. But okay. uh, yes, of course. And therefore, mm -hmm. I could uh, learn German pretty easily. And uh, okay. even though uh, often when I'm like uh, haven't been uh, for a long time in Germany, I, mm -hmm. I, I lose it a bit. 
but uh, yeah okay okay but it it yeah. will come back if you would spend it some comes, time yeah it mm -hmm. comes back fastly i was like mm -hmm. when i'm when i'm one week in germany then it, it's back already yes mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. okay well okay so we are with four languages what else any other yeah i speak Limburgian. that's my own dialect language from the netherlands that's my region they have their own language so what in the <laughs> yeah. netherlands and yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Also, so, it's, so it's kind of a dialect, but it's also officially uh, since like 10 years, it's officially a language as well. Yeah. And is it very different to Dutch or how is it? Yeah, the funny thing is it's some somehow in between of German and Dutch. So it's like if you have here Dutch, there German, uh -huh. This is Limburgian. This is. So it has their <laughs> own ways, but it has the connection with both. Interesting. So, is it is it close to Germany where you grew up? Yes. Then? Yeah. Yes, like yeah. like uh, at the border. Yes. At the border. Okay, yes. I see. And at school, did you learn normal uh, Dutch or this <laughs> Lim Limburgian? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> then I, at the school we speak we, we did speak uh, Dutch. No yes. Normal Dutch, yeah. Yes. But are, are there books written in your uh, language or how is? There's it? also books written. Yes. Yeah. Okay. In, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And and songs know. written and also in in uh, Limburgian. And, oh. and the, the funny thing is when you meet somebody from uh, Limburg, my region, you always switch automatically to your own roots language. Wow. And sometimes, sometimes it also can be a little bit annoying for uh -huh. other Dutch people that these Limburgians, uh -huh. they always switch to their own language. <laughs> so do Dutch people also not understand you guys? Yeah, they don't understand. But mm -hmm. after a while, when they start getting used to it, then they start understanding it. But Whoa. in the beginning, they, they, it can be that they understand pretty much nothing. Oh, really? Interesting. Hey, I didn't know about this. Not at all. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> now, funny, yeah? Thank you. Now learn something again. <laughs> okay, yeah. interesting. But you never actually wrote a song, right? In this language? Or did not, you ever? Not, no? not even in Dutch. Not mm -hmm. even in Dutch. <laughs> Not even in Dutch, only English, only English. Only English. The, the two reasons for that is uh, when you write in Dutch, it feels uh, much more personal even. It yep. feels like you, you're, you're naked, completely naked. Mm -hmm. And when you're in, in English, you can, you can write about uh, personal stuff, yep. but still you have a little bit of distance yeah yeah okay i i see i see yeah. yes and when did you start with lyrics like were you always into also poetry maybe or something or no not at all actually but mm -hmm. uh when i was in after forever yeah. and um uh yeah it, i started writing lyrics because i had fun mm -hmm. doing it and yeah, yeah it, it happened naturally the, uh, the other guys mm -hmm. were not interested in writing lyrics Mm -hmm. and the uh, mm -hmm. floor was so we did like 50 50. oh uh, yeah yeah okay 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 50 50 and together and separate and mm -hmm. yeah also some some songs we wrote together some lyrics yeah. yes wow okay interesting okay yeah. so this is how it started and with epica you also you and simone i guess right lyrics, yes it's right? also like 50 50 yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also yeah because together... what the... Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, and also sometimes some songs together, like on the latest album, uh, the song Freedom uh, was mm -hmm. written by Simone and me together. Yes. Okay. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. And song yeah. you just split in a way, or you come up with an idea, she comes, or. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and sometimes mm -hmm. it's like on some albums we have really our separate ideas, and uh, on this this latest album Omega, it was really like we we had pretty much the same uh, topics of interest. So it yeah. was, it came to us naturally. Yeah, it was really, uh -huh. really going with the flow. Yes. Yeah. Did you actually, wait, did you record this, this album in the like lockdown time or no before, right? Yeah, it was, it was right before. So we were still, yeah. Uh, yeah, actually not totally because at the end of the recording process, the, the lockdown started. We were... Ah. We were the last ones who could record with a, with the choir because then after the, these recordings, poof, uh, the lockdown um, and and the, the, there was this uh, social distancing and choirs were not allowed to stand close together anymore in one room. So 
Yeah. Aha, that's wow, you just made it through. Oh, really luckily. Like it was a matter of uh, of just one day that uh, they were finished and, and it was not possible anymore. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so it was destiny that you could just slip through somehow and We were yeah. very lucky, very lucky. <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah. And and then you released it in 2021, right? Um, yeah, it was a little bit delayed due to the all the things mm -hmm. and then some of the guys thought if we release a bit later then we can go on tour right after and mm -hmm. i was already like uh, i don't think uh, i think it will take a bit longer than that mm -hmm. <laughs> but mm -hmm. uh, yeah yeah it, yeah mm -hmm. so you actually you didn't play a lot of these new songs i mean you had you had festivals right i mean we played on yeah five uh, festivals and mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. we have still some some shows uh, booked Mm -hmm. But it, we have to see when when they will happen, and yes. uh, mm -hmm. because yeah, still everything is unsure. And even if you have like a European tour, mm -hmm. uh, many countries have different rules. So you, that's the thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's it's difficult to to make a plan for a whole tour. And also, if like one guy of the touring part party gets the, the COVID, then, then then you can all forget about it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, of course. So it's, it's very also tricky. Risky. Yes, 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 definitely, definitely. That's why you guys did this um, Omega Alive stream, right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. I mean, I'm... how epic <laughs> was that with all these fire dancers and dancers and rain and the piano on fire? I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> seriously, I, I couldn't believe my eyes. Uh, I know Jens, Jens directed it. Yes, right? yes, yes. You know him very well. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's always talking about you. So <laughs> oh, I hope only good stuff, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, only good, only okay. good stuff. <laughs> very good. <laughs> <laughs> I trained him right now. <laughs> yes, you did. Because I, he never said anything bad about you. And if he would have, I would have told you honestly, but he's only positive about oh, you. Oh, Jens. Oh. <laughs> yeah, if, if, yeah. You're, if you're watching Jens, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. wow. How, how, was, how was this experience for you? I mean, this is quite yeah. a live stream. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. So yeah. first of all, I, I must say I was pretty nervous about it. Mm -hmm. um, not only because uh, of, of all the, the things going on, but also uh, there was so much, so many people involved. Yeah. And in the middle of the pandemic, I thought if if one thing goes wrong, mm -hmm. we were screwed. <laughs> and uh, also it, yeah. because it was in Belgium and you had to like fill in many forms to, to be uh, allowed entrance in Belgium. Mm -hmm. But we were we, we were just staying in between of, of a period that it was allowed to do it. And then go back. But every day we got these phone calls from the Belgian authorities. Hey, are you in uh, in lockdown? Uh, how you say that? Uh, how you call that? Are you, uh, yeah, uh -huh. uh, locked uh -huh. in the hotel? No, no, we are here recording. But yeah, we, we are out of the country again by the time. <laughs> and ah. By that time. And oh. nobody, also nobody knew exactly the rules. So they were calling you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the next day, the same st story. They were calling everybody. We have to explain again. So uh -huh. Wow. Okay. So it was quite a, an obstacle way. You yes. know? Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. then also, also like there, if, if one guy would get the COVID, uh, then the whole yeah. production was screwed. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, yeah. It was really yeah. tricky. But uh, yeah. when everything was recorded and we were finished, and I was so relieved because there was so yeah. many things going on and so many mm -hmm. people involved that wow. it was really, really happy when it was all. Wow. Uh, wow. Finished. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> was this also the first time you met the guys again since this lockdown yes. time? Or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was also the first time. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah oh, we did one, nice. one time mm -hmm. we recorded some videos in Poland. That was mm -hmm. another time I saw them, but uh, yeah. after that, uh, I hadn't seen them for a long time. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and now I saw you have two more shows planned, maybe in December, right? I saw it. Uh... Yes, yes, mm -hmm. but also okay. this is, uh, yeah, let's see how things go, because mm -hmm. we have these shows planned in the Netherlands, yeah. but exactly in the Netherlands, now these cases are going up. And like, uh, uh, okay, okay, yeah. so so you will go with the flow if they're going to happen, we, right? Yeah, and... we go with the flow. And, uh, yeah, what can you do? I, yeah. I expect them to, I hope at least that them to happen because, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know, in a, one way or the other, uh, 
I hope that that the government allows these shows can keep going on because uh, mm-hmm. uh, you have to. Now I think they have found a way to make things happen without m- much consequences. So mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I have to. I have hope. Yeah. Good hope mm-hmm. that they will happen. Yes. All right. Okay. Yeah. And would you play? Did you also now on the festival? Did you play some new songs? Yes, some? actually, yeah. pretty. Pretty many new songs, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, okay, okay. Yeah, because cool. we thought we thought, yeah, we have this new album now. Usually on festivals we play less new songs and and also a lot of old songs. But now we thought uh, every mm-hmm. show we have, we take mm-hmm. the opportunity to play these new songs. <laughs> <laughs> wow okay this is yeah it's actually it's so important i mean for omega life obviously you had a very yeah. good chance to play them <laughs> and it's yeah. now also available on dvd or soon or something uh, right? soon soon it's soon. available on okay. DVD. yes okay okay for yeah. everybody dvd and blu-ray i read yes yes <laughs> yes you're right yeah. ah, you, did your, you did your homework <laughs> yes of course ah, of course <laughs> i also saw you do collaboration um with an artist and you sell some posters and stuff, right? Um, mm-hmm. Which oh. posters? <laughs> <laughs> now I got you. Now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, because everybody in the band has their own island of responsibility. Oh, so I they, see. I see. There can, mm-hmm. there can be something that I have no idea. This. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course, of course. I mean, you are, of course, for the music, right? For lyrics and uh, you singing. know, you know better the things going on probably <laughs> at the moment than, than I do. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, the, so the future plans for Epica? <laughs> no, let tell us what what are the future plans? Do you have anything to announce for Epica or Mayan yes. as well? And just let us know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's quite some things in the pipeline. So with Epica, we are working on on uh, a new project. And that's, mm-hmm. uh, that's going to be new music, but not in the way that people expect. Mm-hmm. So it's not that the music is very different, but it's going to be made in a completely different way. And uh, I, I cannot tell yet what it is, because otherwise I would give, give it away. Okay. But it's some, something people are going to be uh, surprised. People are going to be surprised about uh, uh, what this new way is going to be. Okay. Um, all right. This is a very good teasing. Uh, <laughs> so, can you tell us a date or not really? Or yeah, we we aim for uh, releasing this <laughs> this <laughs> this uh, the beginning of next year, and we have quite some plans for for next year. There's uh, also mm-hmm. going to be some some old uh, re-releases, hopefully. Um, okay. of, of mm-hmm. earlier stuff and mm-hmm. um, uh, there's also like this album uh, uh, Requiem for the Indifferent that exists 10 years next year so okay. mm-hmm. hopefully we can also mm-hmm. do something with that And but there's also mm-hmm. even the chance that, that next year is already going to be so full with releases that we cannot mm-hmm. even do that, that thing we have in that mind thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that thing that thing is going to happen for sure but that ah. thing with <laughs> Requiem for an indifferent uh-huh. that, uh, that maybe ha- that in the, in the case that next year is too full, it's going to be one year later or okay. two years later. But okay. we're gonna we're gonna do something also with with the album Requiem wow. for an indifferent. Yes. Okay, really cool. Okay, okay. So we can look forward to a lot of stuff happening in the future. Mm-hmm. Yes, and then mm-hmm. also with Mayan, uh, we we soon gonna write new music. Yeah, and mm-hmm. and then there's also United Metal Minds. That is yes. the other project that is uh, that where I work mm-hmm. together with uh, new talents from all over the world. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. because it was uh, an idea I had like uh, like a couple of years ago, uh, how excited how ex- exciting it would be to work with with people that are not famous. Mm-hmm. Pretty much the most of them are not famous, mm-hmm. and but but people that have a big talent. And mm-hmm. they always say like everybody has one great song inside of them and some people even more. And mm-hmm. I try to find these people and also uh, mm-hmm. a vocalist with, with a big talent and mm-hmm. bring them together and make an album with them. And this album finally is going to be recorded. The recording start next month. 
Okay, next month you will go into the studio. Yes, yes. All right, with with also with so many people involved, or they record themselves, or how yes, does it work? Yes, this, this is also going to be uh, see how things go because uh, maybe not everybody is able to travel to the studio, not only from for the distance because of the the distance, mm -hmm. but also maybe of the the yeah. We don't know how the situation will be next month with the rules and, and, and different yeah, of countries. Mm -hmm. So maybe some people will record in their own uh, region and in another studio. And yeah. then we're going to bring yeah. somehow everything together. Yeah. Wow. And uh, like the goal is a whole album with yes. many artists involved. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. I think in totally the, there will be like 60 or 70 artists involved. All right, and you lead yeah. this, like you keep it together. And yeah, together with uh, with a with a guy called Jerome. He's a French mm -hmm. guy, mm -hmm. and uh, I must say this guy saved my ass because uh, when I when I was starting with this project, at a certain point, I I, I thought I cannot do this; it's too much. Mm -hmm. And and mm -hmm. this guy, at a certain point, uh, I started working together with him. Also, uh, I found him by United Metal Minds. Mm -hmm. And this guy became my sidekick. So we, we're doing now everything together. And there's still so many people doing a lot of great work. But he, mainly him, yeah. he took uh, half of the huge amount of work from my shoulders. And wow. like this, we could make mm -hmm. it happen. Uh, without him, uh, it would have... Uh, it would have been impossible. Yes, <laughs> yes. But how, okay, if there are like around 60 people involved, is it only musicians 60? Or do you also like have uh, sound engineers that are not that known yet? Or how does it work? No, it's uh, only musicians mm -hmm. uh, and, and singers. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the sound engineer is the, the, yeah, the, the guy from, from Epica, Joost van den Broek. Oh ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, of course. Because mm -hmm. we thought, I thought, with this we need really a pro to bring everything yes. together. Yes, and I, yes. I know no one like Yost who can keep an overview. The overview. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Even with Arian, he keeps the overview. <laughs> and, uh, there's, there's. He's a, a magician. Of, yeah, he's a magi magician. Uh, I don't know how he does that, uh, but he, he, he he's hmm. the only person who, who I know is able to do that. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. And, and, and how does it, sorry, this, but how do I need to imagine this? So somebody comes with an idea and then you, how, how does it work with 60 people? Like, I mean, of course not yeah. 60 people in one song, but can you tell us a little bit more how you will work in the studio? Yeah. We, um, um, the thing is um, we wrote all the music already that this, that happened in the last two years. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. uh, the only thing what still has to be done is uh, writing the, the lyrics and, and some final vocal lines here and there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, in the beginning, I, I really started with it with a blank uh, idea. Let's, let's see, go with the flow. Let's see what happens. Yeah. And uh, there was such a huge amount of music coming my way. At a certain point, I was almost drowning in, in, in music. And I thought, uh, how, how are we going to do this? Uh, oh. And and then mm -hmm. there was so much music and um, so much to choose from. And at a certain point, things started falling in place. And yeah. from there on, the, the machine started rolling. But the first uh, year was mainly like everybody was bombarding me with, me with ideas. Yes. And my head was exploding. <laughs> so... <laughs> It took oh. a while before I found out how things were going to work. Yes, yes. Wow. But hey, this sounds actually super, super exciting and very creative. It is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> so once the thing started rolling, it became fun. Mm -hmm. And then it was yes. really like, okay, now we are talking and now things are going to work. And, and then the, the excitement came. And then, mm -hmm. and then yeah. yes, as soon as there was a, a deadline for also the studio, everybody became yeah. even more enthusiastic because, okay, yeah, now yeah. we're really going to the studio. And uh, so, yeah, then yeah. everything went pretty fast. Yes. Okay. And you started with a crowdfunding, right? Yeah, that's how it started. And mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, where we got the, the beginning funds together to go also to the studio. So yes. I put it all these years aside and now yeah. it's still waiting. So uh, now that we go in the studio, yes. I can right away hand it over to Joost. <laughs> Perfect. Wow. So so you plan to go to the studio next year, you said, right? 
No, already November. Uh, this, so uh, November, yeah. November. Oh, so, next year you will release it. Next yeah. year we will release it. Uh, okay. Also, yeah. Wow. The, wow. the thing is, uh, first we're gonna record it. Then I will see uh, check with some uh, re record companies because I first want to have already some songs pretty much mixed to be able yeah. to show it to the record companies. Yeah. And then I'm pretty sure that uh, one of them is interested because I'm really happy with the the result of the wow. songs. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, once you are into it, you, you want to make it as good as you can get it. And yeah. everybody is so motivated and so passionate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure I drove some people crazy also because there's some, <laughs> some poor guys, they were like <laughs> working already for like on the 10th version of their song. And then mm -hmm. I said, I think you can still do better than that. Yeah. And, uh, yes. and, and then now everything is finished and everybody's happy. And also everybody said, okay, you drove us sometimes crazy, but it was all worth it. <laughs> wow. Hey, this is so awesome, actually, you know, to bring all these artists together also that they can network and find each other maybe yes, for future yes. projects as well. Yes, also mm -hmm. that, yeah, that I think some people maybe will keep working together. Uh, because yes, of this. Yeah. yeah, actually, actually a patron of mine, Thais, I don't know if you know everybody with the names, but uh, yeah. um, Thais, she, she did now with Pete. Uh, a, oh, yeah. a cover <laughs> together and yes. and 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 she she told me because i was like where did you meet guys and she said uh oh in this project i was like this is wow great you see so <laughs> these, these things make me happy because yeah. yeah because yeah people yeah like i said in the beginning you have to find your way and then uh, mm -hmm. we were not sure how to to do it which way it was going but at a certain point it started rolling and people mm -hmm. started finding each other and also yes. yeah also if it's if it's not uh, in the project and even outside the project, some people are working together. So yeah, it's, it yeah. makes me really happy when people find each other due to the project. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah, so it really works. It yeah. really works, wow. And I'm okay. even already mm -hmm. thinking about like, it, it's so fun to do this, that uh, when when this first album uh, works well, mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. already start thinking like a second one at a certain point would, <laughs> <laughs> would be cool, yeah. Yeah, of course. I think it's such an important thing that what you're doing here, actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. because the now that I really know it, it works. And the mm -hmm. thing is, the thing is also when you work with people that you don't know yet, from mm -hmm. everybody that you work with, you, you learn yourself new things as well. Yeah. And so, like, I'm already in the business now for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I start feeling old. But still... <laughs> Still, when I mm -hmm. when I work with with, with somebody new, I I, I learn mm -hmm. new things and yeah, and yeah mm -hmm. every time again, every time again. Wow, yeah, you work with quite some people during your music yeah. career. I mean, also Maya is also quite some people, right? <laughs> yes, it's also quite a bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow, yeah. Okay. But that's also the fun because uh, uh -huh. I always get energy when when, for example, if I would only be an Epica. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I only work with the same people uh, and after a while that would slow me down. I, I mm -hmm. sometimes need to step out of it, do something with different people and then mm -hmm. I'm completely recharged to, to start working also on a new Epica album with, with the Epicans. So it, yeah. uh, I need mm -hmm. it sometimes to do something else in order to yeah, 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 yeah. fully fully recharged for new Epica album. Of yeah. course, of course. And if you feel not creative at all, you go into the ice bath and then it feels better <laughs> again, right? I can imagine. This kind of yes. help, right? And also yeah. the funny thing is, uh, also when I'm on, on the bike and I'm cycling, uh, I wrote now uh, one a new Epica song. So it, the first mm -hmm. one uh, for also a future, this is not the thing, but, mm -hmm. <laughs> but for future regular <laughs> Epica album. Uh -huh. <laughs> And uh, okay. I, was, I was cycling and suddenly I, I had the melody in my mind. And then Perfect. I took the phone on the bike and I recorded, I recorded. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, back at home, I started uh, recording the idea and it became mm -hmm. in three days, the whole song was finished. Wow. Wow. Yes. Okay. <laughs> A future Epica song. Okay. Yeah, it started, <laughs> started on the bike. <laughs> Hey, this is so cool. This is sometimes creativity just hits you, right? Yeah, and you're it's just, inspired. It's just uh, suddenly it was the melody you got in my mind. Yeah. 
I don't know wow. where it comes from. Yeah. Nobody yeah. knows where these Nobody things come knows. from. No, no. Yes, when you're in the flow, it just comes. Yeah. <laughs> try, try to explain where it comes from. Yeah, right. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> wow. Hey, this is really cool. Really cool to know. And um, somebody asks, can I still participate in the crowdfunding? I mean, I guess not. It's probably finished, but maybe do you have anything planned or how to? Yeah, the, yeah. The, there's a possibility that we, because with the first crowdfunding, uh, we made it like uh, 65% of the goal. So it's possible that we do another crowdfunding. Ah. That that only would happen if, uh, if in the case, we would not find a record company because this CD has to, has to happen for sure. But if we find a record company, then probably another crowdfunding is not needed. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Then I mm -hmm. would just ask the people to buy the album. That would be, yeah. <laughs> that yep. would be enough. <laughs> but if we mm -hmm. would not find a record company, then still we want to release it uh, due to our own, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. how you say that in own, we call it in Dutch, mm -hmm. uh, with an mm -hmm. own uh, distribution. Yeah, and yeah. Then, mm -hmm. then could be that we would do a second, uh, second yeah. one to get some extra fund for, for releasing the album. Yes. But hopefully it's not needed. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Super cool. Okay. Okay. Um, and somebody else asked, which one is your favorite uh, Epica album? Oh, that's the, that's choosing between your babies. It's always very right. It's oh. yeah, yeah, it's, mm, yeah. You can't really. You can't. With, with a pistol <laughs> on my head, I would say. Uh, I would say the Quantum Enigma. <laughs> all right. All right. And and why? Also, can you? Or yeah, just a feeling, or it's it's a feeling. Uh, it's uh, it has such a nice flow. The album and uh, everything came, yeah, it's so nicely together. But mm -hmm. I also have a very special bond with Design Universe album, and mm -hmm. with the Phantom Agony, and with Omega. <laughs> so and so, <laughs> so, <laughs> it's hard. It's a hard question. Yeah, yeah. and, and there's, there's not a single album that I uh, am ashamed of. So. This all, every album has things mm -hmm. that I'm really uh, mm -hmm. attached to. And uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. only the Rick from the Indifferent album that I would really like to see with a, with a new mix to, to make it even sound mm -hmm. like, like how I feel it, it has to sound now. Mm -hmm. so that's the mm -hmm. only album I would like to change some things to, to sound-wise. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. the only album that I, I feel like that, that can... Mm -hmm. can can be reached uh, at a higher level mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you know, when when I read, I mean, Epica, I think next year or so, you have 20 years Epica, right? Yes. Is it also. next year? Uh, next uh, year? Uh, or or in already next year? Yes. I next year. Next okay. Year. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I mean, I was just thinking. I think you have around eight album out, right? In total, am yeah. I am I right? Yeah. You're so, right. You're right. So so how is it looking back how much what changed you know do you, for, for the recordings or the songwriting or is it still the same or how is this i mean you have eight albums out with the same band yes yeah yeah we always try to find new ways also with this to to not start repeating ourselves mm -hmm. and uh, that's why at a certain point we switched from sasha pitt to uh, joshua brook as producer and that's not because Sasha Pitt is not a great producer because he's one of the best producers out there. He's such an amazing man. Mm -hmm. But it was just after like five albums, we thought we have to do something mm -hmm. new to refresh yep. ourselves. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, on the last album, we, we also came together and worked in, in little groups in, in, a, in a kind of uh, house in the Netherlands where we had all oh. our home studios set up. Mm -hmm. There was also something completely new that gave us a lot of new inspiration. So, yeah. and I think for our next album, we would do that again, but even more long. So we mm -hmm. would stay like for two weeks together because it was really yeah. a nice flow there and everybody was bonding. And uh, yeah. but even after like uh, 18 years, back then it was 18 years or 17, uh, that we were still like uh, finding out how it is to live together mm -hmm. in kind of one house working together yeah. on music so yeah. you learn new things from each other even after so many even years after so yeah. many years and yeah. touring and so on <laughs> yeah and then, and, and then because yeah you know it is after many years on tour then also you you find also your ways everybody yeah. knows from each other oh this this guy doesn't like this and we have to yeah uh, to think about that and then you yeah. find your way but then when you are in the house together 
it's different again. And then different you, again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we really had a good time. It was like uh, like mm-hmm. uh, like friends together having some yeah. some barbecue feeling. That kind oh, of. Oh, <laughs> awesome! Yeah, and yeah. cooking. And... Cooking, yes, yes. And then <laughs> some guy was cooking for all of us, and then it was yes. really like this uh, oh. new, a new new experience. Like a camp at school. Yeah, yeah some, <laughs> something like that. Yes, the Epica yes. camp. Wow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh wow, that's a nice way. That's a nice way to get into the album, into the mood, into the songs. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. was really joyful, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. that's why we said, "Oh, next time we have to do that even, even longer because it was so much fun. It felt so short. We would have ah. liked to do it mm-hmm. longer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe for that thing that is coming. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, with that thing, it's also really, yeah, it's really special, really special. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, you definitely got us teased here. <laughs> yeah. Hey, awesome. Is there anything else about Mayan you will record? And um, Actually, you have so many future plans. This is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. the thing is uh, nobody has to worry about uh, that I have nothing to do. Good. Because there's, there's, <laughs> there's so many things to do, mm-hmm. even even uh, too many things. Because yeah, mm-hmm. we have, mm-hmm. we need to find uh, time for to make yes. everything happen. And yes, and sometimes we're already dropping like we have like a WhatsApp group with Maya, and sometimes somebody's already saying, "Hey, when we start working on the new album." So and you're like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, soon, soon. soon. <laughs> <laughs> but I always say like, if you want to start already, you can start already. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah. Then, mm-hmm. then, then so far nothing happened yet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Wow, wow. Yeah, you you have a big role in this. This is crazy. Good. Yeah, I yeah. think and... when 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 mm-hmm. I start and the rest will follow soon. Yeah. But mm-hmm. uh, but I always say to them, yeah, if you want to start already, go ahead uh, because yeah, the more mm-hmm. stuff already is there, the better. The better. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I hope already that they. That they hear, that they are listening now, and they say, "Wow, he's right. Let's start. <laughs> he's let's right. Start. Let's get started. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, let's get started. <laughs> yeah, let's get started. <laughs> oh wow! Hey, awesome! And you recharge with uh, the cycling and so on, right? This is where yes. you really get your energy back. And, yeah, um, and I also with that, I always do what I like. So sometimes there's mm-hmm. a period that I have no desire to cycle, but then I I do some swimming or I do some running mm-hmm. or some fitness. Here behind mm-hmm. in, in my studio, I have also the. Oh, there you go. All right. Uh, stuff. Okay. <laughs> <Whew>. <laughs> Quite cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was during the during the, the the lockdown. There was all the gyms were closed, and there was mm-hmm. even one gym had to to close their doors forever. So we could uh, get a lot of equipment for, for from them for uh, yeah almost for free, yeah. and uh, they, they are all in the basement. <laughs> so. Uh-huh. So I can no do at home whatever I want. And uh... wow, there's no excuses anymore. Yes, well, there are no excuses. <laughs> no, no excuses no, no. now. <laughs> well, good. Yeah. Okay, so the future is bright and fit and <laughs> full <Yes>. of music. <laughs> yes, and then, like I said, here I, I live here I, in the field, and I, I mm. I'm very happy here. My yeah. my dogs and cats uh, are, are always keeping me company. Yeah. I have now nine dogs and. No, three dogs and nine cats. <laughs> three dogs and nine cats. Oh yes. my god! Wow. Yeah, you have uh, small kittens, right? I saw something. Yes, they are <laughs> newborn kittens. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. So you always sweet. have action. Always action. There's always something going on, but also it has a little downside because yeah, when you have a lot of animals, there's also some sometimes one of them dying because yeah. Yeah. So what there was recently one uh, got hit by a car and, and passed oh. away unfortunately and and oh. another one another one this week had a, a very very heavy form of bronchitis and um, oh. and we we went to the vet and uh, luckily we went in time so I think he's gonna make it but I have now to give uh, injections myself uh, two times a day so with uh, with this uh, oh. needle. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow you do it yourself Oi. yes okay yes. okay okay it's, and it's not the it most helps. fun thing to do because you you love that animal and then you yeah. you have to uh yeah calm him down and and, and then uh, yeah oh, but, okay. but i have a i have a diploma of of uh, uh yeah how you say that taking blood from people oh okay how you say that okay. in english I actually, blood taker. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. 
<laughs> so it is to, to give injections actually easier than, than to take blood. So uh, I said oh. to the vet, uh, I, I can do it myself. So I don't have to go all the time. there. All the time. Yes. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And for how long do you still have to do that? Uh, 10 days. And then hopefully it's completely hopefully fine. Hopefully it's again. good again. Because, oh, yeah, um... it was really, uh, it was so, uh, the, the vet showed me the pictures of the lungs. And, and usually the, it has to mm. be completely black. But now it was like for 80% white and just a little part black. And it was really oh. terrible. You, you could only breathe like this. <sighs> oh, no. Yeah. And okay, now, okay. Now it's now it's a, a bit better already. Okay, so a bit it's, better. Uh, yeah. Ooh, okay, fingers crossed everything will be fine after these yes. 10 days. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, and you just calm down and then you can do it. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. yeah, because that night that uh, then you have to wait for the, that the night is over and then you can go to the vet. And luckily it was it was on Sunday and the vet said, yeah, you can come over. She's an yeah, amazing okay. person too. And, uh, mm -hmm. Many, many vets would have not even picked up the phone at Sunday. Yeah, she did. But she, she did. She did. She did. Oh. Yes. oh, this is lovely. So are most of your pets from the streets? You find them or? All, all of them. Yes. All of them. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. This is also metal, uh, the United Metal Mines. You also, uh, yeah, explain yes. a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the United Metal Mines is also partly of the, the money what got raised. I used for uh, shelters and, mm -hmm. uh, and every time I see a, uh, an animal in the street and, uh, and I can help one way or the other, or there was recently also one, uh, the cat of somebody broke the leg. And mm -hmm. then with the money of United Metal Mines, I was able to pay for the, uh, the mm -hmm. surgery. And because the, the, the people didn't have much money and mm -hmm. uh, the cat would have no, ended up having no surgery. And with United Metal Mines money, the cat oh. had a uh, working no. leg again. So wow. yeah, with th these kind of things and you yeah. can really yeah, make a difference. Is, yeah, this is cool. Wow. So you bring artists together and you help the animals. So it's, yes. I think it's a great project. So I'm looking forward to everything that will come with this. Yeah, great yes, idea. It's, it's yes. great to, to be able to, to, yeah, because there's so many street dogs and, and, yeah. and uh, cats here in Sicily. Mm -hmm. And when you can uh, help a little bit, then yeah. it's already... yeah. Making yeah. a difference. <laughs> Making yes, a difference. Definitely. Every little yeah. bit makes a difference. Yeah. Yes, you are so right. Hey, wow, Mark, thank you so, so much for for talking about <laughs> this uh, for now over an hour. Actually, went wow. super, super quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, time was time to <laughs> fly. Hey, thank you. Thank you so <laughs> we, much for taking your time. <laughs> and we, we talk even, even very fast. So if we so we, we we talked about so many things in such a... <laughs> yeah i was like okay okay i have these these subjects yeah. because you had actually quite some interesting stuff i was like okay yeah. we need to be okay let's do it let's do it <laughs> so hey thank you so so much for sharing so much with us here and everybody that joined us here so so nice i really love thank these you talks. very much thank you mark and i'm super curious for everything that will come in the future now <laughs> I'll keep you updated. <laughs> yes, definitely. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and everybody, thank you so, so much for joining. And yeah, we see you on the next episode. <laughs> thank you very much. Awesome. Bye, guys. Take care. <laughs> Goodbye. Have a good evening. Bye. My regards to everybody. <laughs> yeah. Bye.